Hallelujah. I was, I was swimming yesterday, and I was just going down the line, and I felt like the Lord said, Alex, I want to give you a new understanding of revelation knowledge. And I started down the lane, and, and, and the Lord said, I'm going to give you this verse, and I want you to go all the way down there and back, and I want you to say it over and over again. So I started swimming, my cap on and goggles on. That's quite a sight right there to see. But I was swimming, <laughs> and I was, I was in that lane, and I said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he. The things that are most familiar with us are the things we lose as truths. And I said it again. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I said it again. And I shouldn't say said it. I mean I was thinking it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I'll tell you after a few laps, it kind of it kind of just connected inside of me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Next lap. Now thanks be to God. Second Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. In Christ. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Say it with me. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Say it again. Now thanks be to God. And then last night, I started to go over and over and over something that I've been going over for the last three or four or five months. And I read it over and over and over again. And I read it over and over and over again. And I read it over and over again. And I'm going after one thing, revelation knowledge. And I realize that when I get rev revelation knowledge, man, I am strong. And I can come at the enemy and give him a knockout blow. And I read this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. I also pray that you understand the incredible greatness of God's power. For us who believe him... This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Verse 22, read it with me. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere in himself. What he is saying is this, that God gave Jesus Christ the authority when he raised him from the dead. The Bible says that he placed him in the heavenly realms at the right hand of the Father. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 says that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And what he is saying is this. Jesus was given all authority that had been given him to, by God. And he has authority over principalities and powers. And be it fear, be it rejection, be it, be it inferiority, inadequacy, or all of the principalities that are working. And then he says, and you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. What he is saying is you need to be looking down from from the heavenly realms on your circumstance and almost at times laughing. I have come recently that when I'm attacked by the enemy, I do a ploy on him and I do what God does in, Ephes in uh, Psalm chapter 2 when the nations are coming at him. The Bible says God actually laughs at these rebellious nations. And sometimes you have to laugh at the enemy and just look at that circumstance and rather than you being pulled down, you begin to laugh at the enemy. Ha, <laughs> ha. <laughs> You're coming down in the name of Jesus and all the principalities and the powers of the enemy. Let me tell you what I am talking about this morning is the power of the gates of hell. And Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And as long as you and I are whipped and in the corner and we are defeated by the enemy and we don't know who we are, we're going to be battered. We'll never take a nation. We'll never see the miracles and the signs and the wonders. And you and I have to know that that there's someone behind us. Oh, you guys look really rough. There's someone behind us that has more. Thank you, guys. Uh, don't go too far away. Uh, that we have more. You can leave. Uh, you, that we have more power against the enemy. And he's saying to us, you take the keys. You take the keys. You rise up yourself and stop being pressed upon. You rise up in the name of the Lord. And you defeat your enemy. You take authority over it in the name of Jesus.
And when the church begins to rise up and they know we are not here like a soccer ball to be kicked about. We're not living on the earth so the enemy can play handball with us. We're rising up in the name of the Lord and we know that the resurrection of Jesus Christ calls Jesus to be elevated to the right hand of the Father. And not only is Jesus at the right hand of the Father, but he says, I have given you a position and you have been elevated. And if I, the Lord Jesus Christ, am elevated above the principality I have called you also to rise up above the principalities and no matter what the enemy some of you are are in a situation your marriage is on the rocks and you have come here despondent and you have come disturbed in your spirit but one day you have to rise up and say I am fighting principalities and powers and I am not defeated I am not defeated I will not be down I'm getting up I'm getting up. I'm getting up. I'm getting up in the name of Jesus. I'm getting up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I am getting up in the name of Jesus. I am arising in the power of Almighty God. Hallelujah. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Someone has said about the church that the church is in many places in decline and demise and there are symptoms of ill health. But you can mark this down. The church of the living God, the church of the living Christ, the beautiful spotless bride of the Lamb of God will not go down in defeat. The sun can turn to ashes. The planets can fall from their orbit. The ocean can turn to dust. But the God who said, I will build my church, will not dishonor his own words. He will not. And we are in the, on the winning side. And we will not be defeated. And in fact, we are armed and dangerous. I almost never leave the house with this little stone in my pocket. And that stone is to remind me of the little story of David and Goliath. And when I put that in my pocket every morning, so I put my rings on and my watch, I say to myself, Alex, you are a giant killer. I kill things that are bigger than me and stronger than me. Because I have, like you, heaven behind me. And I cannot be defeated. There's no demon that can take me out as long as I have heaven on my side. And the devil is defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't intend to lose. I don't intend to give up. I don't tend to let the enemy destroy my, dis my destiny. And I will fight as long as I have a Bible. I will fight as long as I have the name of Jesus. I will battle as long as God is on my side. I will fight as long as there is a battle. And I will be victorious because I am on the winning side. I don't intend to live days and weeks and months of my life allowing the enemy to kick me around like a soccer ball. But I'm rising up. And you're rising up. And we're rising up. And we will not be defeated. And I'm believing our children will be Goliath fighters too. And our grandchildren will fight. And I pray this church will be a fighting church. Not fighting each other. Don't get, don't get that wrong there. A fighting church. And we're fighting one enemy. Satan himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Hallelujah.